You're listening to the Better People Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Warner. Uh, with me tonight, uh, or today, or morning, or whenever you listen, is the uh, as, uh, the ever-lovely Rhonda Ramirez, licensed professional counselor from Central Texas. And uh, today, Rhonda, we're talking about how your environment can affect your mood. Yeah. That sounds, um, I'm sitting in my house and I have been talking to some people the last, over the last weekend. So, um, and I had visited someone else's house and somebody commented on how much it looks like their personality. And my initial thought was, well, don't you want your house to be welcoming and to feel homey and to feel like yourself? And so I think the idea of making your environment comfy and cozy, but also like interesting and exciting to you is really a cool idea. Um, I think that especially when you're coming home, it should be a, a place of peace. Hopefully, hopefully that doesn't always work out. Um, but it should be a place where you can come, come and like relax or de stress. Um, so, you know, there are specific things maybe that, that are specific to you that make that happen. Um, you know, some people, some people like to decorate their house like a hotel and they don't have any necessarily connection to your house. But I think it's important to have some things in your house that that give you connection and give you um, peace and comfort. Do you have something in your house that is, is like yeah. that? Yeah, well, a couple of things. You know, I have kids, and so the kids will draw a right. picture. And, and you know, it, it, it probably wouldn't win any awards, you know. But uh, it, it, does, it, it, it does in my heart, you know. And so I'll, I will, right. we'll have kids pictures uh, hanging mm-hmm. from my, our bedroom to kitchen to the walls and I always hang them at eye level and it's, and also their eye level yeah. so that you can see it. And, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm sure that will fluctuate over years as they, as they grow and, and uh, eventually maybe move out. We'll see. There's a few I'm not sure of. Right. And, uh, and <laughs> you know, I think that that'll uh, evolve our d- decor as well. But right now living, living in the moment of being parents, you know, I've got pictures right. of, of us and my kids and I in a photo booth that uh, on my desk next to me. And I record these in my room and kind of a corner of my room and, and uh, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's kind of a cramped area, but you know, I, I do have a little bit, I have pictures of, of a little, of a boys group. I run at my church wayfinders the things we've mm-hmm. been to. And, and so for me, they kind of just ground me and bring me, bring me back to, Hey, you, you know, you're, you're Thomas Miller or Tom Warner. If I go with my on air, right. uh, for those listening, my real name's Thomas Miller. Uh, you know, and, <laughs> and I, uh, I, you know, it grounds me and reminds me of who I am. I, you know, my wife and I, uh, went to a uh, painting with a twist, um, a place in town for a date mm-hmm. night, done it two, two years in a row for our anniversary and hanging on our walls are the, are the pictures that we painted and, and I, I, I remember those events and then not right. to, not to plug painting with a twist, but you can buy um, artwork that other people have done, uh, like the instructors. Yeah. And so we were there mm-hmm. and, and we found a few, my wife likes Beauty and the Beast. And so we found a few, few paintings, Beauty and the Beast yeah. related and they're really well done, you know? And so we found right. up a few of those. I like it because it, because it, it's human and it's, um, mm-hmm. I know it sounds like I'm a robot, but it's, it's very... No. It's human in that these are just average people that have painted. They're, it's not Rembrandt or you know, right. you know, Da Vinci or anything like that. It's it is a, a from one human to another. Here's something I created, and so for me right. though, it's, it, it's peaceful or it yeah. grounds me. It gets me back to say, hey, this is your place. This isn't someone else's. Right. It's mine. Yeah, and it and it has a connection, but. Between- to you, to your wife, and and you know what she likes, and so those are, yeah, those are all meaningful things. I'm I'm sitting here and I'm looking at in my own house. I'm looking at a lot of plants. I have a lot of plants um, at my house because I I like to see things grow, 
and um, and and my jobs that pay me, that growth takes a long time because I'm dealing with humans, and it's it's sometimes hard to see that. But plants are so easy; you just give them some water, and they and they grow. It's amazing. You know, humans so, are kind of the same way. You know, we we're just complicated plants <laughs> with we're plants with emotions. So give us water, right. and we'll we'll grow too. So we'll grow too. Yeah. But you know those that and I and I just this weekend moved some plants into my bedroom because I just like seeing them and I like the green brings me back to nature the um you know the leaf shapes and and the fact that they're healthy is a very positive thing for me to see and look at um so right now I have a lot of plants in my house um, but I also have things that, you know, sometimes there are things like little reminders of specific people or specific times that are beautiful. I have a whole bunch, I have a whole wall of pictures, you know, little tiny pictures of my best friends and my family and just some weird, odd things that we would do or anything, but but when I see those, I'm like, oh, okay, I can breathe. Like, this is like normal life. It doesn't always have to be so stressed out. Yeah, well, you know, um, I, I went out of town last week for a business trip up, uh-huh. to, up to St. Louis, and uh, you know, it was fun, but, but there's nothing like that feeling of coming home and your home, you know, whether right. it's you see your belongings or your possessions around you or you know, I think the happiest one to see me was my dog, which is probably mutual. <laughs> I was happy to see him too. But, uh, yeah, yeah no, I, I get that. And, uh, you were actually about to finish a thought there and I interrupted you. Mm, I don't remember. That's so okay. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I was going to say, um, a couple years ago, maybe a couple summers ago, could have been during COVID. I don't even remember. Time is very weird. Um, but on Netflix, there was Marie Kondo, and she was an organizer, a declutterer, and her kind of uh, her kind of question that she would ask about things was, "Does this thing give you joy?" Right. Um, you know, and so that's a nice clarifying question for things inside of your house. Yes, we have to have like all of the cleaners underneath our sink because we don't need a dirty house. We have, you know, there are things that we have to have, but if we're, if we have things that we see all the time or that, that is taking up a lot of space in our house, that clarifying question of does it give you, does it bring you joy? Is it, is it something that connects you to people that is a happy moment, is a happy memory? It's a good way to kind of decide what are the, what are the things that that make my home feel like my home. Right. You know, and what are the things that, that give me a moment to breathe and distress, distress? Well, um, you know, that kind of reminds me of a, of an episode we did last year. It may have been before you were on the show. Um, mm-hmm. but it, it was a guest named her name, Shannon Brawley. And she, she, a local person who, who mm-hmm. started a group. It was embracing minimalism. And, mm-hmm. and basically her concept, and, and she admits it was not that she just invented it. She got refer, she got uh, key ideas from Marie Kondo and, and a guy named yeah. Joshua Becker and, and, some, mm-hmm. and, and James Clear from Atomic Habits and all that. But basically it was, it was how, can you, how does your environment affect your s- stress levels? And right. the l- more things you can get rid of, the more you're able to kind of embrace peace you know you find peace within right. yourself and uh, in a and minute I, we'll I, talk about some negatives of not ne- of, a, of an environment and some tips but no right. it, it, it was I a, so a, wish I was that person that could be more minimalist but I am not that person <laughs> so I have to pick and choose things and you know sometimes there is a point where I'm like oh well I'm going to bring something new into the house then I have to take two things out Right. And that was a lot of her, you know, her process was if I'm going to put this in here, I need to get rid of something, you know, right, and, and right. You, you surround yourself with the things that are, that are important to you that are meaningful, that bring you joy, mm-hmm. kind of like the Marie Kondo right. concept. 
because mm-hmm. we kind of got into that movement a little bit, not to the extreme, Except, but, mm-hmm. but a lot of our habits now, like how we even fold our clothes and how, you know, came yeah. Jacqueline, my wife, that, a lot of that stemmed from, from how she did it. Now she, I've also yeah. gained stuff. There's a lot of more crud <laughs> in our house. It shouldn't be. Yeah. And, and every yeah. d- weekend I'm usually, usually like, okay, we're just going to start throwing stuff away. We're just going to give it away. Free cycle or whatever. <laughs> doesn't always work out that way. We end up getting rid of right. stuff and then bringing stuff back in. But it's Right. <laughs> well, I also think that that even if even if the rest of your house may not be completely picked up, that there should be a place in your house that is maybe more picked up, more comfortable for you, not necessarily um as I don't know, catch-all sure. for you. So like in my own personal house, sometimes the kitchen, the dining room, the living room, it's not necessarily dirty, but it's definitely not, there's stuff everywhere. Sure. But my bedroom is is always picked up because for me, it's really important that I go to a place where I'm going to sleep and rest that feels more put together. And right. so... I will even move stuff, like if I have left stuff in the bedroom, sometimes I'll move it to the bathroom and or move it to the closet before I go to bed because I like to have it at least, you know, mostly organized, mostly picked up, not anything kind of hanging out where it's not supposed to be, just because I like to sleep in a place that is at least as organized as, as you know, or as comfortable as possible because if I'm going to rest, I need to rest well. And I can't necessarily rest well if there's a pile of laundry to be folded on the end of my bed. You know? Right. Well, so, it, it, it's kind of like um, during the, the pandemic or, or the pandy, as some call it. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, you know, I, I was working in my bedroom, same place I am right. now, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, And I know that's not healthy because, you know, it's not healthy to go to sleep at the exact same place you work right. and then wake up work. and yes. roll right out of bed to your desk and hop on a Zoom right. call. You know, it's not it's not good for your mind well, because feel. there's no separation. Mm-hmm. Now you've got to right. separate that. Um, so now I get that. Yeah, I just think that sometimes we just really need to keep at least one space where we know for sure that that's just going to be the space that is peaceful and calm for me. Because I know, you know, if you have kids, it's hard to keep everything peaceful and calm. If you, if sure. you, you know, if you like me, if you're not home a lot and you come home in the last, you know, spend an hour, hour and a half before you go to bed, it's difficult to kind of keep everything in a nice, beautiful state. But for sure, my bedroom is always that way. Sure. Well, I think um, I think for me with kids, you know, my house looks lived in. You know, it doesn't look right, and it's it not, should. It's not dirty. It's just you no. know to have the occasional toy on the ground or to have right. shoe where it's not supposed to be it tells me, oh, there's people who live here, and Absolutely. that is the way it's going to be. I don't want to have. For I don't want the kids to come into a sterile, you know, environment as, as you said at the beginning. For a whole, sure hotel room you, you need to show right. that hey people live here and what my house looks like right. is going to be different than what your house looks like and and that's good that's that's diversity right absolutely so you know there's just you know we just kind of have to step back and say okay what is again what is important to me what brings me like comfort and peace um because your home should be a place that you get to kind of rest and rejuvenate in, mm-hmm. uh, well, in my mind. And we say home and, you know, this can dovetail into even work environment, you know, oh, I, for sure. Uh, you know, I've, I've worked with people and, and sometimes I have been the, the people whose desk and office is just cluttered with everything. And uh quick story, I had a coworker, my old job that he, his office was just very organized guy, but his office was just a, in shambles all the time. <laughs> and well, one day, he cleaned it a little bit and this, the maintenance crew was coming through or the cleaning crew was coming through. And they thought, 
they thought he had been robbed. So they they <laughs> called the police, and he's like, "Oh no, no, no! I cleaned I cleaned my office today." What, oh my goodness! Guys? And it was funniest thing I'd ever heard. But it was that was just how he had lived his lived his life in his office. But off from office right. space to to your room to to wherever you are going to spend your time, I think right. needs to be organized in such a way that it is is conducive to representative, representative and, a, and a and a channel conduit of peace and right. you know so what would what would be some tips for things not to do or you know what would be some things that can cause this can cause panic more than it can cause peace hmm. well i think that really depends on you because sure. you know personally i can have handle clutter on my desk and, you know, know where everything is. But, like, when I'm talking about work, I can handle the clutter on my desk, but the rest of the room needs to be, you know, at least have a place. You know, everything has a place. Um, so I think that really is super dependent on you. Now, if you walk into a room, regardless of what room it is, and it instantly gives you stress, then you have to evaluate, okay, what exactly is it? You know, because again, it may not be that it is, um, that it might be cluttered. It may be the light. You know, I have, mm. I have several friends who really don't do well with, um, the fluorescent lights. You I, know, so I'm one of them. I, that. you know, yeah. years ago I have was given an office and I thought, oh, it needs, I don't want to have the fluorescence on. So I bought some, some cheap floor lamps at Walmart. Right. And ever since then, Every office, every opportunity I've had that has an office involved, there's a floor lamp, and I kill the, I kill the fluorescence because yeah. for me it's peaceful, and I, it, it's conducive for my creative process, which is in air quotes, whatever that may be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But you know, and, and then when we leave on vacation or just a, f- a day out or or two days out of the area, you know, I have a personal rule that I, I mean, I don't make the others do it, but I try to take out the trash before we leave. Mm-hmm. I, clean, I wash yeah. the dishes and put the dishes away. So the cl- sink is clean because when you come back, you're wanting to, to relax. And the last thing you want right. to see, at least for me, I don't want to see a pile of dishes in the sink or, and I don't want to see trash bags and cans that need to go out. So I'll either the kids will, or I will empty those and clean up right. the living room. So that way we come to a nice clean, clean house or clean ish house. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, that I can't, I'm not sure that there's a specific thing that is really, you know, like, ooh, nobody should do this. I think that's so dependent on the things that, that make you feel comfortable and the things that are, um, that are grounding, really, oh, that's that are fair. grounding for you. That's fair. You and, I, and I say that because I know that to some, you know, like some people don't make their beds and, and right. some people yeah. say, well, if you make your bed and remember to do it that can in some cases kind of ground your room in a way right. because your bed's right, now right. organized and now it kind of can reduce stress. And now you have a nice made, if you, even if you, there's a, there's a, and I can't remember the man's name I actually did a uh, episode on him. Um, let's see if I can, as I'm typing here, if I can pull it up. Um, basically it is, uh, let's see. I'm not going to find it fast enough, and I'm going to. You're going to hear me. You're going to hear me <laughs> yeah. go uh, 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 a lot. Basically, there's a there's a there was an admiral that did a um, a um, graduation, and mm-hmm. and it was the whole focus of his speech to this graduation, this graduating class, was to build healthy routines, and right. one of those yeah. parts of the healthy routine, and I found it as I was speaking, was that uh, make your bed. You know, as right. Admiral William H. McRaven, he t- told, and this is me quote reading it, t- told the graduating class of the University of Texas at Austin at their commencement, if you want to change the world, start off by making your bed. And right. it's because it's a it's a small habit that can, that can cre- yeah. it's, it's kind of under the atomic habits concept is right. by that name. But the thing about it is, is, you know, um, you know, his, his example was even if you have a terrible day, the worst thing is you come home to a made bed. You know, right. so it, right. was, it was just a, it was an interesting concept, but you know, not, concept, not, yeah. not everybody that may not affect everybody. And I, and I'm looking right. at my unmade bed right now 
Yeah, me too. And because we had a we used to have a rule, I say a rule, but a, our, our my wife and I would be whoever's last out of bed and makes the bed, and and right. uh, we've <laughs> we've kind of let that fall off to the wayside. Um, <laughs> lately, we're usually pretty good about remembering to make the bed, but we've added well, this. Well, you know. Go ahead. I was going to say, we've added this weighted blanket, so it's heavy, and so it's like not always easy oh, to, yeah. to make the bed. <laughs> yeah, but that's excuses, so, so excuses, good. Excuses, excuses, but yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, even in my own home, like I have lots of, lots of artwork on the wall because that's who I am. And some people come in and they're like, well, I don't even know where to look first. <laughs> Probably because they're more minimalistic than I am. You know, so, so that might cause anxiety in some people but for me I love to be able to see those things because they're they're either by me or by a sweet friend or a former student or you know one by my grandfather you know so all of those things bring back those memories for me Mm -hmm. but I but I also can identify that for some people it's a lot it's like visual overload um, and so, you know, again, it just kind of depends on what is, what are the things that make you feel comfortable and what are the things that bring you kind of that, um, comfort and peace in your environment. Yeah. And even, I would say even, um, for me personally, um, I keep the sound in my house and in my work classroom, um, kind of quieter because, uh, loud sounds are are kind of distracting to me and they're overwhelming at times so you know um i keep the sounds in my house quieter i keep the sounds in my classrooms quiet now my students are like why can't we talk i said you can talk you just can't yell at each other (laughs) because the sound for me is part of that environment that keeps keeps it comfortable for me you know so even that is is you know, every sense, you can kind of check off your senses um, and see, you know, what are things that are bothering you in this area of your sensory mm-hmm. whatever. Well, even know. going back to work environment, you know, sometimes you can't always, because your environment can is, is not just the physical parts of your office or your, right. wherever you're at. It can be the people. It can be the, right. the problems that's going on. And I've learned for me, and I I've uh, haven't done it in probably a few days, but um, I will when I can. I will leave and go for a walk around either the building right. or, like in the building, or I'll go outside the building. Or if I can, there's a little park up from where I work, um, and I'll go walk at the park. You know, and right. and it's it's, yeah. it's it's there's a cemetery built in the park, and so I you know I guess my my they, the the guests in the park are going to keep it down a little bit, but uh, <laughs> you know I'll walk around this park um, and. Uh, you know, get in some, get in my steps and get in my exercise and also mm-hmm. think. And, and right. uh, I don't really listen to music. I just listen. I just think, you know, what, what's yeah. going on. And, and at the end, when I'm done, I come back and I've reset myself. So even, Correct. so the kind of the, the whole point of the show today is to say how your environment can affect your mood and, and mm-hmm. uh, your environment can be a reflection of yourself and kind of what brings you peace. And, if you're not getting peace in your environment, you need to, it, you need to work to to change those things that you can. Key yeah, word is the things you can. Find one place. Yeah. Yeah. Find something you can do to improve it. There was a a, a while back. I had a, a, a we're in a smaller place now, but we'd had a we had a three bedroom uh, location and uh, didn't have uh-huh. the kids at the time, and so I turned that into. I didn't make that. The living room wasn't in the living room. I made that over a nice, peaceful area, and I put the TV and the music system, whatever we had, back in back when CD changers were all their age, you know. Right. And right. Uh, I put that uh-huh. in in the bed in this room. It was intended to be a bedroom, but I I turned it into our little solace area with nice right. lighting, and and uh, it really it really was like when I had a bad day, I could go in there and either listen to music or read or do nothing, you know, and uh-huh. and. Uh, and, uh, and so not everyone can necessarily, you know, have that luxury of having that. Um, so right. I, I think you turn what you can into that solace, um, mm-hmm. as best as you can. Even if it's a corner of yeah. a room, exactly. wherever you can find that space to be like, okay, this is a comfy 
place where I can breathe. Well, it's like where I record is, a, is like I said earlier, it's in the corner and it's a little nook mm-hmm. that I built. So I have my mixer next to the road. I have a little Roadcaster Pro, which is for podcasters. That's the thing you can record into. And I've got it on a little sh- a little table and then I've got my computer desk and, you know, Granted, I, there are things I'd like to improve, but it, it is my mm-hmm. little my little corner to get things done, and it's mine. You know, right. No, that, right. I don't touch my wife. My wife has the equivalent right next to it. No, no, there's her little <laughs> little area, and we don't touch Space. each other's stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, we kind of let each other right. have our own space. And so mm-hmm. now I say all this, I look at it, and I'm realizing I need to dust really bad. There's <laughs> dust on everything. So now my, my stress has gone up, but... <laughs> So well, just get a little dust rag, you'll be good. That's right. That's right, exactly. But then I'll have to do it again in another month. So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so environment affecting the mood. Um, yeah, yeah. I uh, think this has been a good show. Uh, anything else to add? Any any other? Is there a part two, or is there anything else that you would? I was going to say people? there's. There's always a thing with color as well and how color affects me, but that's a whole other story. No, it's very true. <clears throat> Pardon me, started mm-hmm. turning into a robot sound there. No, it's very oh, true. Right. I think that, uh, I think that, um, uh, you know, uh, back when I was in, in school, and I don't know if this is still the case, but they would have kind of a beige lighting uh, arrangement and it was intended to, to calm. It was either beige or blue. I can't remember what color they went with, but it was, it was in calming effect. And, yeah. and I remember that. And, and that's why I do the floor lamps at the office. Cause it's got the nice warm yeah. incandescent, they're fluorescence, but they're, they're fluorescence, but they're the bulb, you know, the, the, the right. in color temperature adjusted. Um, mm-hmm. so, well, this has been a, a fun topic, uh, a relaxing yeah, topic. Sure. It gives me some thoughts to kind of clean up what I've got. To bring myself joy. <laughs> so, yeah. Marie Kondo, a little bit of a plug there. I don't know what she's doing. Okay. I haven't heard much from her lately, so I guess she's still... I haven't either. So. Still doing her thing. I think she's still on Netflix. So, yeah, you were talking about decluttering. I uh, I decluttered of uh, my digital uh, media a few months ago to cut uh-huh. out my subscriptions. So mm-hmm. that might be another topic of decluttering, but for me it was wow, getting, sure. rid of, getting rid of all these subscription services from Netflix to Hulu. I kept Disney plus, but, but to, mm-hmm. cause I just didn't, you know, if I did use them, I would spend too much time watching them and not doing other things around me. So that's another topic for another day. Another topic. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Rhonda, thanks for joining us this evening. Um, and I need to stop dating it, timing it. Cause people could listen to this at any time, but we cut these in the evening. So, uh, that's why I say that. Oh, yeah. Well, Rhonda, thanks for for joining us today. As always, you can Mm -hmm. visit us at our website, betterpeoplepodcast.com. Also available on on your favorite podcatcher, podcasting apps from iTunes to, or Apple Podcasts, I guess is what it's called now, to uh, Google and all other places. Find us on Facebook and on Twitter. Go to the website, betterpeoplepodcast.com. For more information, as always, thanks for listening.